everyone, Edna Kimball, Edna Sells, Century 21 Right Real Estate, and welcome to today's episode, How to Real Estate. Um, and you guys know I love bringing on our favorite service people so that you know who to call when you've got a problem. And today, our special guest is Dylan Springwater. Dylan, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yes, and it was kind of short notice, so thanks for coming in. Yeah, yeah, it worked. It worked. <laughs> perfect, perfect. So obviously, I know you, but let's go ahead and fill the in on who you are, what your situation looks like, and are you homegrown here? Homegrown here. I went to Keys High School, graduated 2010. Then I went to NSU. Uh, took five years, but I do have two degrees in accounting oh. and finance. I worked in the auditing field over in Johnny Hobbs's office and did uh, taxes as well. I did that for three years. Uh, when I was in college, I also was in a fraternity in the Lamp Chi Alphas. So then we went to, I wanted to start going back to building fence with mom and dad. So I started doing that about God, seven years ago, I would say. And that's Springwater Fence for those of you who- Springwater yeah, Fence, yeah. yeah. I did that since I was 13, went to college, took a break from it. That'll make you go to college. It'll make, it? oh yeah, I was like, God, I don't <laughs> want to do this. Work. I don't want to do yeah. this, but ended up, I, once I went to school and did the accounting, I was like, man, I would rather build fence, surprisingly. <laughs> I think it was just everybody said go to college and do yeah. that, and I didn't realize that really I had a passion for being self-employed and doing those kinds of things until after the fact. But your degree makes you a better business. Then. It does. No, yes. no lie there. Yeah, for sure. And um, you're married, got a family? Married, have a family. Uh, I'm married to Jamie. She was my high school sweetheart. Uh, <laughs> we have one child so far. She is four. Her name is Sawyer, and she does taekwondo, gymnastics, and we're going to try t-ball this year. Oh, my gosh. And how old is Sawyer now? Sawyer's four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. T-ball is so much fun at that age. Yes. <laughs> we're going to find out, I guess. I'm not yeah. going to coach. Uh, I think uh, Cornell. Oh, he's yes. Gonna, he's oh, gonna, perfect. Yeah. He's going to be the coach from what I hear. Yeah, that'll be a good one. So. Uh, we have another one on the way. Um, the May 4th is what I'm hoping for because that's what they said. And then okay. we can go with May the 4th be with you. you know? <laughs> so. Spoiler alert. The child does not know they're supposed to be here on May 4th. That's so what I'm hoping. So it may not work out. I'm well, for that. Okay. We're, okay. We're, we're having girls and I'm not going to get boy. So I'm needing that one win, maybe. <laughs> you would consider that a win? I'll take that as a win. I'm, I like I'm that. I'm going to be a girl dad, I guess. I'm still accepting that. No football is <laughs> going to happen, so that kind of makes me a little sad. But we're going to do Taekwondo and Jiu Jitsu, and they're going to kind of have some combat sport. Plus, I feel like that'd be good being girls, being able to defend themselves when they get older. Dad is setting them up for when they start dating. Yes. Dad doesn't need to kick I'm not going to have to worry about it. I'm not going to have to worry about it. I like yeah. that. I like that. So you, but you've segued from the fencing into kind of your own. Yes. Yeah. I was, after the accounting, I did three years of fence with mom and dad. And I was like, you know, I kind of got that entrepreneur bug. And I was like, you know, I want to do my own thing. So... This will be the beginning of year five of the lawn care business. Oh, has it been that long? Yep. Okay. This is year five of, and we are at about 250 clients, I'd say. I'm trying to get to 300 by the end of this year. Okay. And two years ago, I stepped back over and started basically being project manager for the fence as well. So I kind of do both jump back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I think we have. Right now, in the slow part of the year, we have about 12 guys working full time. We get in the busy season, I got to hire about four more because when the bone picks up, it it gets going. We also do Christmas lights in the winter time. I wanted to make sure we mentioned that. I that saw was... so many people posting their Christmas lights yeah. this year, and it was all courtesy of spring water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's been a good business to have in the winter time, and we enjoy doing it. It's a little dangerous. Uh, so that's the only thing you get a little bit of anxiety, but it's also kind of fun if you have a thrill for being a little scared when you're on a roof and that adrenaline <laughs> rush you get from it. But we enjoy that and having the Christmas spirit and all that. We really like doing that. So tell us about the lawn care. So you're not, um, it's not you and another guy in a lawnmower. You've got... It started that way. So mm -hmm. you know, year one, it was me and uh, a guy that I kind of met through the fence company and he was helping mom and dad with maintenance. 
and I grabbed him over because it was kind of slowing down at the point when I grabbed him and he worked with me. His name's Jimmy. He's been with me the whole entire time. So it started out just me and him in a truck mowing yards. We had a uh, guy we started with like 17 yards and by the end of the year we had 80. Oh, wow. And then next year was the big jump from do you want to add a truck and things like that because to, to go beyond 80 you had to add a truck yeah and uh, i got lucky my niece had a boyfriend that was wanting a job and he called up and was one job and i was like God, i don't know if i want to add a guy and add a truck it was Girl, kind of a scary. scary that was a yeah. scary yeah. moment yeah. but to elevate you gotta you make to. some scary moves um, yeah bought a truck bought another trailer added a mower hired him Hired another guy, so then it was me in a truck, and then Gabe, one of my niece's boyfriend, still niece's boyfriend, he's kind of my right hand. Um, at this point, he's been with me, this will be year four, and he is my right hand. He yeah. actually handles most of my Christmas light stuff at this point as well. Oh, that's great. So he's actually put up more lights than I have now. <laughs> surpassed me on that so. well that's great so um so obviously guys every time we go through this why do we have a fence lawn guy here when we're talking about how to real estate but it's on so many levels for one whether you are a homeowner and need someone to do some of these things or two you are an entrepreneur and know want to know how to level up um that's why we bring in the best of the best and the thing is is you get to a growth point where you have to make a decision am i going to do everything myself right? Yes. And that you're going to top out. <laughs> or am I going to trust and bring someone on and teach them and give them the skills to take on some of that and take it off your plate? So that's what you're doing with Gabe. Is, yes. Yeah. That's upgraded perfect. him. We are now at four trucks. Yes, we have four guys. We have four leads. I have another one of my nephews works for me. His name's Jordan and another guy named Cole. So I have four leads on the lawn care side. And they pretty much take care of take care of me out there in the field, and they take care of the customers really well. And I very well trust them yes. to do so. But uh, if there's a problem, I they call me first. Okay, and, and it trickles Dylan's down from there. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And you know, so really, you are a small business owner, homegrown here in yes. Tahlequah, and we think that's really important to have you guys on and tell us how they did it, because there's going to be other people who want to know how you grew this business. So that's really impressive from five years. Um, so you've added on different extensions to the business, mm -hmm. but also you are, I, and I know this because I sold it to you, but you're also a landlord, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you've got a lot of irons in the fire. I did decently. I, I'd have to credit mom and dad to a lot of everything, even the business part of it, because they had the fence business. I started working for them when I was 13, learning how to build fence. So without, it helps having the accounting degree, but it also helps having that life experience. Oh, absolutely. As mom and dad, I, I tell you what, last year when I started helping them with the fence, that's when I really appreciated what they had done Yeah. yeah. over the years. When I was a kid, I didn't realize it. I was like, God, I, just, I went to school, came home, had food on the table, had a nice <laughs> thing. Now, it just all flowed, right? I remember last year it hit me one day and I told them both, I was like, man, I appreciate you guys so much. Oh my goodness. Because I was like, we're going to play this on Mother's Day because that's so, <laughs> and on Father's Day again. Yeah, yeah. it was. But they are hard They are people. super hard yeah. workers, yeah. both of them. Then mom is an ace at what she does. Dad is probably the hardest worker I know and have ever met. Yeah. So we've all learned from both of them how to do it. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is you didn't just wake up one day and say, I'm going to try this. Yeah. You've seen it, you've been trained up been trained all the up. way up. I've been blessed to have them as like who to go to with the question yeah, about how should I do this? Yeah. How do I handle this situation that came and rose up? Yeah. And so I've been very blessed that I have them for this. Yeah. And they are definitely landlords. They've got some, oh, they got yes. some properties. They so, a lot. Yeah. So that, that is one of the next phases. That my first goal is to purchase the fence company from them. So that's yeah. goal number one. Hopefully we're still, that's kind of in the works, got to get taxes done, yeah. bank loans and things like that to get that part going. But that's hopefully before the end of the year, that'll be a transition. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so um, obviously I know all the extras that you do with the, with the lawn care, but just for those who don't, um, I've had you assist with haul-offs. Yep. Yep. I've had you 
remove a tree because I couldn't get a photo. Do you remember? I was like, that tree is blocking the photo. Um, trim trees. Um, gutters? Do you clean gutters? We will do gutters if they ask. Yeah. Okay. And sprinkler systems. We dabble in sprinklers. I'm kind okay. of separating away from that and want to put more of my, my mental energy into okay. fence stuff. So I'm kind of leaning away and doing, I want to focus, if I'm going to focus on electronic stuff, yeah. I'm kind of wanting to lean towards gates. Okay. An automatic gate installation oh, yeah. and try to because you can almost that could be its own separate thing if you absolutely could do it all yeah. in the state and stuff like that and do it for other fence companies even that's kind of what my goal is oh that's perfect and and i think it's so important to to really have a passion and if sprinklers are not your thing but the gate is to to run with that and not just dabble in something yes. but just be like hey we want we want to be good at what we do yeah. and we want to be the best yep. so that's I, amazing I've so i started to narrow down things for sure <laughs> i want to be really that, good huh? at a few things yes yeah and i think that that's the key so anything else at the um uh, right now i would say because we're about to be in spring i usually always think like mowing season starts march 15th in my mind oh, okay. so people if you don't hire me and you hire somebody else either way the best thing to do is you need to already be calling about getting mar mar uh, mulch installation if oh, you yeah, want flower bed stuff that, yeah. because it's better to get a hold of us now or a spring cleanup because once we get to about march 15th especially april we are hooked up mowing and that's the mistake most people make they, they wait, wait till they need time. it and then they call you and you're it's hard out. to get to you it's yeah. hard to get to you prices are gonna be more expensive because we're already working overtime in april as it is to try to keep up with between the rain and how fast the grass grows right. so yes i'm fixing to start advertising that we're gonna do mulch installs and if they need some flowers to put in cleanups and stuff like that my sellers out there call him <laughs> i've seen some of your lawns they're really looking a little shabby because it's that time of year you really it's like just a weird time it's still cold it's but so you're not thinking about it yeah but get on the list and get in because like i said by april most of the guys and the other guys that work in my field we get busy yeah we're already stretched Free booked. yeah because if you already have your clients from last year then yeah. you're, you've got to work in the new clients. Got to work so, in yeah. the new clients. You're trying, we're trying to grow. I'm sure all of us are. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that I also love um, about spring water lawn care is the ease. Um, you, you do texting, right? I can text him an address and tell him specifically what I need. And then I can cash app him. Is it Cash App or Venmo? Venmo. Venmo, Venmo him. So I, I have both. So, but I just love the ease of being able to. Here's the invoice. Here's the payment. We're square, and we can both see it, and there's no question. So, for those of you that are super, super busy, I promise you, you will love the convenience of being able to just communicate very quickly, pay for it, you know, all of that. And he's he's also been known to send photos of the job, and I love that. I think there was a time where a tree needed to be removed. Um, I sent him the photo, this tree needs to be gone, and then he sent me the photo, the tree was gone. <laughs> I like to do that when it's like something of a project and not just yes. cutting grass because you do want to show that you were there before and after. Yeah, and I wasn't able to go check the job, and I, it was perfect because then I could share with the homeowner, hey, it's done, this is what it looks like, and everybody was happy. All right made my job easier so okay um and so you've got some big plans coming up then but tell us since you are somewhat in the fence industry um what does that look like and what do you offer fence wise uh well bread and butter would be wood privacy and chain link that's probably 90 percent of what we install and we do also you can do ornamental iron which is a little bit more high grade costs about double what a wood privacy would but it's cost. so gorgeous it's very pretty it's very pretty it's very expensive and some people want it and i'm totally for building it for you if you want it built um right now uh it's been kind of slow because we can't be getting in people's yards with oh, the ice and the water yeah. and so that kind of has hurt us a little bit to get going we got a lot on the board right now we're about a month out I'm trying to get them done before I get into the spring rush and so I can kind of pull some guys away from the fence. So we're trying to get a big push right here. And we are currently closing a big seven foot ornamental iron in Stillwell and fixing to start a six foot black chain link at a daycare down there. And that's take, that'll take us about three more weeks to finish, but we've been down there for about six months. We had some things, construction site stuff that held some of that job up. But, and it, as auto gates go, it has 
three double 24 footers that are on uh, lift master systems so oh nice a, a you'd have to have for that yes. length. yeah uh, we have a uh, they have clickers on the inside where they don't even have to come out so we ran power all the way into the building where they can be at the desk and they can open the gates shut the gates nice yeah and you could have that on your personal residence that's, too that's true. That is true. <laughs> absolutely um and so for those of you who are thinking about doing a fence um as a realtor there's several different levels of fencing obviously so the the typical six foot dog-eared pine um and what we end up with a lot of times is the fence is fine but the post break off and um, when they did ours it was the the option of doing cedar which was a big upcharge um, metal post I love that that was an option um, and I think there was even one other like maybe even metal rails uh, you could do metal rails yeah metal rails you don't so. necessarily need, I do like to push the metal post they make a two and a half inch uh, square tubing post so you don't have to worry about rot so it's gonna last more than 15 years you know it's gonna last forever basically right you'll be replacing and as long as you stain your fence your pickets will be fine forever pretty much just like you guys even stain if they're your pine deck. pine not quite as much okay cedar I, i'm a cedar i actually won't build pine oh okay we, we will not okay. build pine we our pickets are only we will only sell cedar picket fence okay well i knew mine was but i didn't know if that was just because we yeah up, we, we yeah we upgrading. push for cedar if somebody mm -hmm. wants pine we'll advise against it we pretty much won't if they really want it we probably won't do the job not it just is a product with our name on it i know it what it's going to look like in a year yeah and it really that's so that's what i was going to ask how quickly typically does the pine it just it warps and it yeah. bends and it just it's so you got maybe product. three years yeah maybe tops okay the cedar yeah. could should last every bit of 15 years and it will last a very long time if you make sure to steal and stain and stain it every five years just like you would a deck it's the same Thing, basically. Same material. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And are you doing any of the composite or? We have done composite. Okay. It's a very another expensive product like right. doing ornamental iron, but it will last obviously a substantial time longer, pretty much forever again, as long as. It, the only thing I could see that could ever be an issue is if it was in a really hot area oh. where that composite could warp. I, I could see that happening. Okay. But again, you would kind of walk them through any concerns that, yes. okay. And then my personal favorite, which I don't have, but my personal favorite, I love the white vinyl. White Even, vinyl. yeah. Are you guys doing any of that? We do it sometimes. I'm not a big fan of it because it just doesn't, when like it tears up, it's so hard to fix because ah, it's, you have to replace they change the styles so often, the manufacturers. Okay. So like 10 years from now, I might've installed it or 10 years ago. And then now, it you might be really hard to find that part to fix okay. that one picket. Okay, good to know then. Even though Edna likes it, <laughs> it may not be the best choice yeah, because it's, it's, it's a hard tough, to match up. It's a tough thing because they, they do change styles a lot and it's kind of weird the things that can break on. You know, okay. weed eaters coming through and I've throws a rock seen, and puts a hole true. in one yes. picket. Yes. Now you got to replace that picket if you want to make it look like it was new again. Absolutely. Uh, I do like, I don't mind the three rail. Like when you just, I love that. I don't one. mind those. Yeah. Those are pretty easy to replace. Pretty standard. They usually they don't they keep a horse in or something like mm -hmm. that. Like they couldn't mm -hmm. obviously keep a dog in, or they're just a good perimeter fence that you just don't want people driving in your field or right. something along that line. But they're very decorative and attractive looking. I think <laughs> my personal kind of if I was on build one at my house, I'd probably do like a four foot with six inch cedar posts with cedar railing with black chain link okay. under the cedar, like a cedar yes. trim kind of with black chain link. Right, right. I like kind of, kind of gives it like a rustic -y look maybe. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of, um, a lot of subdivisions, their covenants, you know, on the higher end gated communities, that's pretty much what they require. Um, they don't allow privacy fencing. So, so that's a good option. That is another, that is an option. I think a lot of people, they use post and rail like that three inch mm -hmm. round rail. And it works. Right. But if it was me, I'd upgrade it and go with that if you can yeah. pass that through your government. It would be there a long time. It'd be there a lot longer, <laughs> and I think it looks better than the, the rail fence, honestly. Okay, yeah. Now, this may not be in your wheelhouse, but I'm going to ask you about it. Do you rent fencing? We do. We rent fencing. Guys, they rent fencing. So yeah. tell me about that. Like, yeah. that's only for great big, huge projects? Yeah, we or? could do it for smaller ones. Say okay. you had some kind of great, you had a pool you're needing installed, and they had to take out half your fence. 
but we could come out there and bring you a six foot by 12 portable fence pieces. It's kind of, it kind of looks just like what, like the dog kennels that people okay, can buy. Okay, almost like panels. Lowe's or, or mm -hmm. wherever. And we could pin in an area for you. Or if you just needed, I mean, a construction site is usually what we need it for. But so that's more of where we sell. So we mm -hmm. put a lot around the hospital and a lot of things Cherokee Nation does. They require that for safety reasons, but or even a home builder could do yes. the same thing. So they could protect their site. Kind of makes it harder for people to steal. Well, they were doing a basement, yeah. and I said, I think you can. They were nervous about how that would all look if somebody in the neighborhood fell in, and I was like, I'm pretty sure they rent fencing, <laughs> so they weren't ready to commit to the style or have it all messed up with the equipment. So if you need to rent fencing. Yeah, you could do that. And sometimes when we're building the fence for you, say uh, we're, we're fixing to do one over in Cambridge Circle with privacy and he, his fence is about 15, 20 years old. So he's like tear the whole thing down, but he was concerned about his animals. Exactly. So I was like, well, it's gonna take about a week to build your fence, but we could bring some panels up and kind of get you a 25 by 25 area, oh, keep your dogs in oh, until we great. get done building. Okay. So can do something like that even. Yeah. So there's scenarios. Okay. I Who knew? <laughs> a rental situation for fencing. But yeah, it's obviously there's, there's things we haven't thought of before, but you guys have ran into probably a little bit of everything. Yes. There's, <laughs> there's been some things. There's still things that surprise me though. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's even in my industry. So, well, is there anything else we should let everybody know that um, spring water fence and spring water lawn care offers that uh, we want to make sure we put it out there? Uh, well, we do snow removals as oh, well. That's that doesn't happen very often here, but well, the past couple of years, year. past yeah. couple of years. Yeah. So we do offer that as well. When, when the time comes, we can have that service for you. It might still, I mean, I think one year didn't, it, it did snow like April, I think. Yes, crazy. Yeah. that's true. We were mowing yards and it was snowing. I I, I've seen it snow on Easter. It was a long time ago, but I have seen that. So, yeah. Okay. Well, what I love about it is if you use him for the fencing or the lawn care or the snow removal or the haul off or the tree removal, it's kind of nice to know, you know, he, you're just in the phone and he can handle pretty much any of those outdoor items that are needed. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually put your contact info below. And is it your cell phone number or you have a business number? It is still my cell phone number. I'm fixing the, I will always keep that as the business number, okay. but I'm probably going to get my own personal phone number. <laughs> I understand, but we'll link that below. So if anybody is needing to get on the books before March 17th, now's the time to do that. So definitely. Thank you so much for coming, especially on such short notice, but I was noticing my lawn was looking a little low and I needed to talk to him, so I thought I'd bring him in. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I did want to bring you in, though, so that everyone would know that we do have great local companies that you can rely on, that we have utilized, and that we know and trust. Okay, okay. So before we wrap up, um, Dylan, we always bring it back to houses, and uh, we like to ask if money was no object, what three things would you want in your dream home? Dream home, for sure, you had a big shop. Uh, Not shop. for toys, but for like, you know, I almost imagine it more like a ba big basketball court. Oh. Where you can do lots of different things besides basketball. So like just a big gym for the girls to be able to play in and have a lot of fun. And we can work on things even out of the weather. Yeah. House, inside the house, I'm not hard to please on that stuff. I just pretty much go there to sleep. Okay, <laughs> it's going to be a really nice shop then. <laughs> really nice shop. I just need the house to sleep. I wouldn't mind like a study oh, okay. in the shop. I wouldn't yes. mind something kind of go back to old school and have like an office area. Yeah. And thirdly, you just definitely have to have land. Okay. Have, to have land. Um, I think Sawyer, for sure. I mean, Jamie's a big farm girl. Yes, yeah. Sawyer's favorite animal is a cow. I'm, I'm thinking we're probably... <laughs> Gotta eat some land. Yes, there you go. Okay, well, those aren't crazy. So, but I do suspect that shop would be really big. Yeah. yeah, of course, of course. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for playing along. We love asking our, our guests what their, their dream home would have. 
So thank you for joining us, yeah, and thank and uh, thank you for being such a good son. Your parents are going to love all the sweet things that you said. But guys, that's really who Dylan is. So um, as always, guys, thanks for watching this episode. If you would, um, wouldn't mind, please like, subscribe, and follow. If you want to reach out to Dylan, his information will be below. Dylan, do you have a website? Uh, we do have a website. Okay, what is that website? Uh, I actually couldn't tell you. I think it's like Springwater Lawn Care or something. Okay, we will verify that and we'll put it below. Um, but as usual, if you would like to be a guest on the podcast, reach out. Or if there's someone that you would like for us to have on as a guest, please let us know. And thank you so much for watching.